Now it's time for the Unbiased UFO Report. Hello, Dave. How are you today, sir? Ooh, yeah. This is where we are joined by John Hudson a couple times a week to come in and tell us the latest news on what's happening with UFOs all across the world. And John, we got some interesting news tonight. We're going to start off with an old story that's becoming new again. And there is this ever living battle between Travis Walton and Mike Rogers, who is driving the truck way back when, when Travis Walton was hit by a beam by that UFO and disappeared for five days. Now, Rogers seemed to go off his rocker a couple of months ago saying that the whole incident was hoaxed, it was fake, Travis is lying for money and publicity, and then he said he was misquoted after him and Travis have patched things up, and now there's a bunch of people questioning whether or not fire in the sky really happened. Yeah, it's um, you know, it's it's um, you know, once again, it, it's a good thing for someone to study who's new to this because it shows how challenging this all is because of all the different personalities and all the different baggage that everyone carries into this. But uh, you know, there's a lot of of, of dark water between these folks, and um, you know, I know that Travis at one point uh, earlier in the year, um, around the same time that um, um, you know, Mike Rogers said that he was. Uh, no longer to be considered a witness for the event that, uh, you know, they, that they'd had a falling out and, uh, and that, you know, he was kind of separating himself from, from Mike. And so as a result, uh, most of the melee that we've been seeing uh, has, hasn't really involved Travis. Travis is kind of staying out of it. And most of it is between um, Mike Rogers and this, um, this new guy that basically uh, named Ryan uh, Gordon. And, you know, as you mentioned, basically what happened was, was that uh, uh, Gordon recorded a conversation that they had. Um, he, I believe the note said uh, with, with his, with his watch, which I'm a little surprised because I've talked to my wife with my watch and it doesn't sound as good as his recording does. And, um, and basically, you know, what he published as a recording was, uh, you know, basically, you know, Mike basically saying, you know, yeah, you know, we talked about it. It was a hoax. We planned it, you know, all this stuff. And it was incredibly, I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was really damaging material in many ways. And, uh, and this was essentially in March and very shortly after it, um, uh, Mike Rogers went on to, um, uh, I believe it was called uh, coffee and UFOs. And uh, which as a side note, I tried to go back and, and re-listen to that on fa on uh, YouTube, and that video has now been marked private. So um, I don't I don't know why that is, but that video has now been marked private, so you can't see it anymore. But I listened to it when it first happened, and Mike was very kind of like, oh, you know, I don't know why he did this. This is so weird. He took me totally out of context. He clipped the video. He clipped the sound. He moved stuff around. He just made me sound. He goes, I talked about the fact that we had discussed the idea of doing a hoax at, at times in our lives, but not that it was this event we were going to hoax. And, and he basically laid out a very, a very logical explanation for why, you know, this recording had come out. And, you know, that was basically in the, you know, in the April timeframe, you know, right after this March announcement. Um, but the story persisted. And now most recently, three days ago on Erica Luke's show, uh, she had a four hour show that was basically, um, you know, um, uh, it was, uh, you know, R Ryan, Gorbin, uh, Ryan Gordon came on for the second half and Mike Rogers was on for the first half. So two hours and two hours. And it was not a pleasant interview. Um, you know, uh, Rogers was, um, uh, you know, it was just Rogers portion of the interview was, was challenging. And, and then unfortunately, when, um, when basically when, when Ryan Gordon came on, he was much more polished, much more together, uh, much more fluid and, uh, you know, really seemed to win over the hosts of the podcast. And so if you just listened to that podcast, you would walk away thinking that the whole Travis Walton story is a hoax and it's not that simple. And so I'm not saying that I know for sure you know, where the dice fall. Um, you know, I personally, 
I'm not, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not putting a whole lot of weight in much of this because I know there's back channel things going on between these gentlemen. I know there's a lawsuit that's that's it, that's somehow involved between uh, Mike Rogers and and Ryan Gordon, not not involving Travis particularly. But um, it's gotten very messy and very convoluted, and it doesn't help because it's causing more and more fights between um, people in the community. People saying, oh, I cannot believe you still believe Travis Walton after that news came out. And other people saying it's not conclusive. And so it's it's messy and very unfortunate. Do you think what a lot of people in the UFO world think that Mike Rogers is a little jealous of all the attention that Travis Walton has? Because when the movie Fire in the Sky came out, they were doing interviews everywhere, whether it was Sally, Jesse, Raphael, whether it was Oprah, it was Mike, and it was Travis together. They mm -hmm. were a team, and I believe Travis was still married to Mike's sister at the time. And, that, and that's an important point, right? That, that's an important data point between the two of them because, I mean, I, I can tell you I have a little sister, and, you know, I, it, it's hard to think clearly when you think your sister's, you know, been slighted in any way. So do you think now, though, that Mike Rogers is, is trying to get the best of Travis to try and not, in his opinion, Travis off the pedestal? I, I think it's entirely possible. You know, I don't I don't know enough uh, about all the details to, to personally make any judgment at this point. But I, I, I will say that. Um, you know, we we know that there was that there was a, a a breaking of the relationship between the between Travis and and Mike. We know that it involved money. Um, you know, th there was some conversation about you know, um, Mike believing he was owed some some returns for some sketches he did and for some other things. And so I know that there was a there was a separation over over money. Uh, we know that the the marriage to the sister uh, added extra fuel to the relationship. And um, but I get the feeling. And this is just me, but I get the feeling that Mike Rogers would have essentially just, um, you know, separated himself and kind of faded into the distance, if not for this conversation that Ryan Gordon uh, recorded. And I, I think it's really, I think it's really the, you know, right or wrong. It's really what Ryan Gordon's doing that's really throwing all the fuel on the fire. And I but don't know what Ryan it, Gordon's it, angle is, is it, but. Is it Ryan Gordon's fault? I, I apologize. I don't know who the gentleman oh, is. Yeah. I've never heard his show, but is it really his fault? Or is it is he doing his job and bringing a topic to uh, the realm of discussion? It's it, that's and that's the challenge, and and it gets muddier because the the other challenge is, is that Ryan Gordon was working on the new Fire in the Sky film that Travis had been talking about, at least according to according to him. So he he claims to still have a good relationship with Travis, and so it's it's the deeper you go into the story, it, it gets muddier and muddier and less and less pleasant. Um, but unfortunately, it is being brought up. And the thing I'm challenged with is that if you look at all the different stories in this community over the whole history, a couple of them should end up proving wrong, right? I mean, we have enough we have enough major stories now in in this world that statistically, at least one of them is going to end up being wrong. And if one of them ends up being wrong, misrepresented in any way, it it doesn't shed anything on anything else. Each each story has to be considered individually. So even if even if you know this one goes one way or the other, it's not that you can use this to say that anything else is valid or not valid. And so I think it's unfortunate that people are treating it as a um, you know as this stick to hit each other with. Well, th this is kind of disappointing in order to try and find this out because the people who don't want any of this to be real and want to stick the UFO and extraterrestrial people back in the in the wingnut closet where they feel we belong are only going to gain gas from this fire. And I, 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 really, I really don't appreciate that. All right, let's go to the National Reconnaissance Organization. They have a deep space tracker. Tell us what this is about. So this is funny. So basically the way this came out is because they're currently in Europe uh, trying to negotiate for a location for one of the new dishes. And so um, I, I don't know all the locations the dishes will be, but this is for a, a new system that the NRO is planning to stand up. And it, it's an improvement over the existing system. The existing system has a range of about 12,000 miles. This new system will have a range of about uh, 22,000 miles. 
And basically what it will do is it will give us a, a range of 22,000 miles around the earth where we will be able to detect and track anything larger than a football. So that's pretty good fidelity for that sort of range. However, and I, I, I created a simple graphic to show this, which I'll, I'll, I'll post up and I've already posted on my Twitter account. Um, if you consider the fact that the moon averages about 238,000 miles, it goes up and down because of its elliptical rotation. But, um, you know, on average, it's about 238,000 miles. And so basically what that means is that there's, you know, there's another 110,000 miles between the edge of this range and the moon that... Uh, we don't we don't watch that carefully. Now that's not totally true because there are deep space networks that look for objects, but they're looking for much larger objects. And the fidelity that this is going to be doing, the size of a football, means that we're going to have great fidelity within that twenty two thousand mile range. But I have to admit, it it uh, I think it's going to be a little bit of a surprise to everyone that the range is as uh, as shallow as it is compared to you know just the orbit of the moon. Okay, so are they doing this? to try and compete with NASA and SETI to try and find if there is alien type craft coming into this atmosphere or our space area? I think that the, the, the entire um, public and documented catalyst for this program is the commercial space world. The fact that there are now so many satellites going up um, NORAD is having a bear of a time tracking all these objects that right now they can only track to 12,000 miles um, because the NRO, uh, their data will feed into everyone else. And, um, and basically, I believe the main catalyst is that. However, with that said, um, you know, just as the, you know, DOE uh, uh, capability to look for uh, nuke vibrations and, and acoustic sounds have found that whale pod and can can be used to look for UAPs and so forth. I believe that this network will also be very, very useful um, when it comes to looking for looking for UAP U UFO type traffic, as well as the James Webb telescope, which as a side note is actually going to be at 175,000 miles. So 50,000 miles beyond the moon. Um, and so that will be able to actually see quite a bit as well. I know they'll never tell us, but, uh, you know, because the space race is opening up, I could see the importance of getting something more sophisticated up there, you know, wanting to keep track on whether it's China, Russia, India, Pakistan, or whoever yeah. else is <laughs> sending uh, equipment up and yep. rockets into space, even the Japanese. But was there any extraterrestrial talk? There was none, but I wouldn't expect there to be. Um, and and honestly, they didn't even talk about any. They didn't talk about any targets at all. All they talked about was the fact that they would be able to monitor any target larger than the football, um, which basically probably means it's actually larger than the golf ball. I I I would be willing to bet that they're they're that they're you know rising that a bit to be safe, um, but you know basically they're just saying we will be able to track any object because the United States does um, because of just our our assets we do end up playing um, a, a a an alert network sort of uh, a role in the world and that if we see someone else's satellite having trouble or we see something else in a collision course with someone else's satellite, we will reach out and we will notify them and we will coordinate with them and try to help them deal with it, if, assuming they want our help. All right, John, that's all the time we have for tonight. We will talk to you in two nights' time and get another full report on the unbiased UFO report. Great job as always. Thank you, sir. You have a great evening. Take care. John Hudson, everybody, our intrepid UFO reporter on the unbiased UFO report.